Rahul Bhats, India Calling. India Calling, Rahul Bhats. Whenever I come onto the stage, people laugh out a lot. And I often wonder, is there something wrong that I'm doing in my dress up? <laughs> in my posture? Or maybe what not? But it's a great feeling to make people laugh. And therefore, here I am speaking in a humorous contest about India Calling. India Calling makes you wonder, what's it about? Is it about somebody being called to India? Or is it about somebody going to India? Well, it's about those things. Yes, it is about those things. How many of you have ever visited any other country besides the US? A lot of people. How many of you have ever wanted to visit India? Well, quite a few people here. I'm here to specifically tell you, when you go to India, what you can expect, what you should never expect, ah! what you can do, and what you should never ever think of doing. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> first thing first, you're going to India, which means traveling. How do you like the idea of traveling in the United States? It's nice and easy, right? You have your car, you take that car, you go around, you have a device which is called GPS, which allows you to navigate very easily, beautifully, effectively from your start test, uh, location to your destination. No problem whatsoever. It's a very beautiful ride. You have great green scenery, but no people to look at. Just you, your music, and your GPS. <laughs> but in India, it's never the same. When you go to India, I think Captain Kirk Spock must have gone to India when they came up with the idea of beam up Scotty because that's how you want to really, really travel in India. You want, the, wherever you are, you have some device which says, take me from here to there, and poof, you're there. Because if you want to ride in India, you are in quite an adventurous stride. When somebody told me this joke, I couldn't relate with it because it's just the opposite in India. The joke was, I would like to die just like my grandfather did. Happy and peaceful and quietly, not like the passenger in his car. <laughs> It doesn't make sense to me because if you're a foreigner, not a foreigner even for that matter, even if you're an Indian and you're sitting in a right in a car, in a taxi, in an auto, your eyes would be closed and the driver would be screaming. <laughs> well, that is lit. Come on. <laughs> well, speaking about more things while traveling, over here you never see people, but in India you just don't only see people but a lot of them. And often at times you wonder where in the world these people are coming from. <laughs> Answer remains simple. We are coming, when people get married, we have kids. So that's the process. <laughs> but we as an Indian don't know when to have kids and when not to. So, yeah. And then, not only any people, we have a lot of animals. Cows, dogs, cows walking right by a car, you can literally touch them, but you would be scared. Dogs thinking that you're their food, trying to bite you when you're walking on your moped, driving on your moped. A lot of people. And the best thing about GPS, you know, the way GPS works in India, you don't have a device. But you have your driver, or the person who's navigating you, step out of the car when he wants to find out where a particular place is, and go ask a people, person. And when he, went to, when he goes to ask a person where this place is, three other people will join, even if, they don't, even if you don't want to ask them. And one person will say, oh, sir, this destination is in the east. One will say it's in the west. <laughs> one will say it's in the north. And the other in the south. You'll never reach your destination. So don't think of traveling in India. 
She has come up with the idea, beat me up Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this brings me up as to why would you want to go to India. I've heard a lot of people ask me this question. You know, Indian marriages are so successful. So maybe you want to go visit and attend somebody's marriage in India. When you go to attend a wedding, you will find a lot of funny things. And just as somebody has, like a lot of people ask me, why are they so successful? The reason is very simple. We do a lot of investment into marriages. We put in a lot of money, a lot of hullaboo, a lot of different different things, and overextend the marriage period. Our marriages don't happen in a day. It lasts for years. The process of getting married lasts for years. I'm an example. My process of getting married has been happening for past three years. <laughs> and it's still about to happen. <laughs> when you have invested so much time, money, energy into marriage, people want to recover every bit of their investment from that marriage. That's why they last so long. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is why. But thinking of marriages, uh, I think of food. And I also like to tell one more joke. Why do you think this is the biggest reason for divorce? Nobody? Marriages, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about what is the main thing that people like at marriages. They like food. Why? Never ever think of eating food at any Indian wedding. Especially when you're with going to attend a wedding of a person like me, whose family like to eat spicy. I'm pretty sure a lot of you like the Indian food or the spicy content of it. But when you're coming to a place of person like me, don't ever think of eating that food because my level of spiciness of the people in my family doesn't start where it should. It starts where most other ends. Ha! And if you try to eat food at my place, you'll be flying without the need of an aeroplane for the rest of your life. <laughs> It's that spicy. Having said this, I still feel the way Indians have a lot of culture, happiness, friendship, and so many other unique, beautiful gifts that we have to offer. So once in a lifetime, do visit India. You'll go there as a guest, but you'll not be a guest because we have a saying, Atiti Devo Bhava. You'll go there as a guest, but you will be treated as God. You will be the God. Thank you. Go!